What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Skews Day to you. It is March 26th, 2024. I'm Trey. That's Mark. How you doing, Mark? Good. Yeah, excited for today's show. We got an interview we taped with uh, Congressman Eric Swalwell last week. Uh, was it Thursday? Uh, mm -hmm. We taped it. Uh, talked about uh, the TikTok bills, bill slash S. Uh, we talked about uh, impeachment falling apart, and we talked about uh, just what it's like to be in Congress with a bunch of psychos who... Uh, Call your names on TV, then ask you how your weekend was in the cafeteria. Uh, yep. So uh, <laughs> we're talking about the uh, bridge collapse in Baltimore, too, in a little bit. Before we get to the show, uh, a couple things. Uh, Diddy's house, uh, houses in L.A. and Miami were raided by Homeland Security for alleged involvement in sex trafficking after, you know, he's facing five different lawsuits for uh, uh, sexual assault, uh, four women and one guy, I think, and... Uh, I mean, uh, you don't want Homeland Security knocking on your door, but he told you he was a bad boy for life, which is the heck he's joke in the world. I just did. He did uh, tell you that. Yeah, I, it's wild. His uh, like the fact that he, the fact that he made it almost ten years into the post Me Too era with mm. all this on his resume, his abuse resume or whatever, mm. is kind of wild to me. It makes you wonder, like, how many other guys there are out there at like the upper echelons of the entertainment world or the political world or corporate world mm -hmm. or whatever who are still getting away with it you know what i mean because uh yeah he had a pretty good run there i guess but yeah it's crashing a billion dollars now. a billion dollars in an army of lawyers uh uh on your side uh, making people sign ndas will go a long way um and second like so his plane was in antigua yeah uh, by the way he hired ghislaine maxwell ghislaine ghislaine i guess her name's uh jeffrey epstein's Mm -hmm. compatriot her he hired her lawyer last month so he knew this was coming but uh his they were people were tracking his plane is in antigua do you uh the name of his plane is love air which is not what you want to name your plane <laughs> yeah. when you're accused of sex trafficking yeah that's unfortunate it's like when uh like after all the stuff with uh louis ck happened which is not on this level obviously mm -hmm. but when all that stuff with louis ck happened he had that movie coming out that was called like i love you daddy or something like that mm -hmm. and it was just like I never saw that movie, but it could be totally uh, justified and fine in the context of the movie. But that, but just that name and that moment in time, in that context, of that happening, it's like that's that's truly unfortunate. That's rough. Well, <laughs> it, my understanding it was a biopic starring a uh, stand-in for Woody Allen, so uh, maybe oh, not. But okay. that, the, the, okay. the movie, yeah. yeah, I never saw the, it. The movie was uh, the reason for the story being written. <laughs> so he, he flew way too close to the sun with that one. Uh, here's a weird story. in uh, Wasco, California, a man was arrested after a guy got hit by a train and he severed his leg and another guy took his leg and ate it. Um, and how can Joe Biden say the economy is good when people are can't afford groceries so bad they're eating legs. So yeah, buddy, this, yeah. this dude, I like the level of like, Woo, it must be my birthday that this guy was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Every leg popped out from do you know what I mean? Like if you yeah. want to eat a leg, how you know it that never comes up. And then one day you're at the train tracks and there's a leg right there. He must have been like, God damn, I must have been done something right. This is kismet. Here's <laughs> here's how like how much of a fighting a twenty dollar bill in his jeans moment this was for him. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> You think, oh, he took the leg home and cooked it or something. Nope. Right. He picked the leg up, walked a few feet away, and started chewing on it. Uh, yeah. Railroad workers saw him. So, yeah, we got some – just just your – people are just out there being psychos, and you don't know it until they're presented with an opportunity to eat a human leg uh, that's uh, very, very fresh. Um, in political news, uh, George Santos says the, the Republican Party is too corrupt and embarrassing for him to be in it anymore, so he's going to run for <laughs> Congress as an independent. <laughs> That's uh, so funny. The face yeah. of embarrassing corruption uh, on their side for the past year or so. It was like, this is, these guys are too much. <laughs> yes, he's running in a district of one of the New York Republicans who tried to push him out and got him kicked out of Congress. So that's going to be a fun one to watch. Uh, 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 old friend, our friend, friend of the pod, Bob Menendez, has decided not to run in the Democratic primary, uh, which, you know, give him, you know, he's got those corruption charges. Also give him more, free up more time to spend getting his wife off of vehicular manslaughter charges. Uh, so he said he might be considering an independent bid, which is funny because he's the most, like, you know, one of the most hated figures in New Jersey politics, even when he was winning elections. Um, the primary involved a congressman named Andy Kim and the governor's wife. 
the governor's wife just dropped out, clearing the path for Andy Kim, who by all rights is a you know a decent guy and decent a decent congressman. Um, and but the, the fun thing is, like, it might be the collapse of the New Jersey political machine, which would be good for you know this residents of New Jersey because mm-hmm. uh, like the, just one of the most. I mean, Chris Christie ran the place. It's one of the most corrupt <laughs> states in yeah. America. Uh, and uh, like the, the, the so the, even there have been lawsuits. Kim filed one about the, the way the ballot works because they the party they, the county party chairs control the ballots, and if they have candidates they don't like, they'll just like hide them on the ballots. You can't find them to vote for them. It's just like just crazy See, shit like that. I, I'm not saying New Jersey or any state should be corrupt, but it does feel kind of appropriate for New Jersey to be that like. Uh, shadowy and like mafia type feel to it you know what i mean like the like all these like uh nefarious covert operations they're doing politically and whatnot it's like coming out of new jersey it just kind of feels like uh you know that's the way it should not that's the way it should be but you know what i'm saying <laughs> it makes sense yeah, I mean- <laughs> Remember when Chris Christie to retaliate against some mayor or something? We did fake construction on a bridge to cause traffic problems, and some lady got stuck in traffic in an ambulance and died. And everybody's like, "Well, I guess that's just New Jersey." <laughs> um, right. But while we're talking about flagrant corruption, um, so Trump's Truth Social has never made any money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's famously lost a bunch of money, but yet. Uh, an uh, investment firm owned uh, aff- associated with Jeff Yaz, um, uh, which owns another co- digital media company, might be merging with True Social. The Jeff Yaz, we talked about him in the our, our TikTok uh, build episode we did the co- uh, on a bonus excuse a couple weeks ago. Um, he's the one. This same, same fund was a big chunk, big chunk of Biden, uh, Bite Dance, which uh, owns TikTok, right. and he went and lobbied Trump, and Trump, who spent the last half of his administration trying to ban TikTok immediately said we should never ban TikTok after meeting right. with this guy. And now this guy, right. it, it's not clear how many shares they still own or how involved in this you know, his company might be, but this merger is going to put a bunch of money in, in Trump's pocket. Um, uh, somewhere around $4 billion, I think. Uh, he's going to own a majority of the new company, even though it's a merger. Uh, the, the thing is, like, in order to sell the shares to access this money, you'll have to get approval from the seven-member board of uh, Trump Media. Uh, that board uh, includes Don Jr., uh, Cash Patel, who is in the Trump administration, uh, former U.S. trade representative, also worked for Trump, and Vince McMahon's wife, yeah. who was Trump's labor, not labor, he was one of Trump, he's in Trump's, he was in Trump's cap after donating a bunch of money. And so another part of this is like they're going public. So tr- Trump sells his shares, the price drops. That's how supply and demand works. But going public, they seem to be trying to turn into a meme stop where like mega people can buy shares in this company to keep the price up while Trump sells to get cash in his pocket. So you can post this $464 million bond, which is now $175 million, but that's a different story. It's right. like, it, it, this, this is so, this is so fucking crooked. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm very admittedly money dumb and have said that forever, but like. I just don't get out something like this. The primary asset of this company is true social, right? Which like you said, has never made money. And also like in their last reporting quarter had like a million dollars of revenue or something like that, or two million, like mm-hmm. revenue, not profit. And that's the flagship asset of this company. But this, but this company stock is valued at multiple billions of dollars or something. And right. I understand that it's bullshit and it's a grift, but like, I don't, what is the ostensible rationale for that? Like how it's, how is that possibly justified? There's no more concrete proof of so much of like wall street being just made up fucking hocus pocus, you know, ghost money bullshit than this to me. Cause I don't, I can't even understand even as a grift, how that's supposed to make sense. That valuation of this. Like, uh, usually, like a stock market stuff, I'm like this doesn't make any sort of sense to me. It's obviously just done a bunch of dumb bullshit. But the fact, again, the value of the stock appears to me that well, we know Trump can just get on True Social and tell his supporters to spend a couple hundred bucks on it, and I'll right. go do that, and then it'll be worth that. It's like it's like it's like a it's like a crypto asset or something. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like yeah, you're right. How can how can a company with a million dollars in revenue have Trump's fifty five percent be worth four billion dollars? Right. Right. <laughs> And also, I had been wondering, I said this in my video last week, I was wondering how Trump was going to, the next way he was going to find to financially exploit his dumb base or whatever. And my guess was commemorative plates. So this is way more advanced and sophisticated. <laughs> Today he announced, he's, he licensed his, uh, his name to promote 
a line of King James Bibles. It's called the, uh, <laughs> for $60, you could own a Trump endorsed Bible. It's the only, it's the only Bible, the FAQ for the website I went there. It's the only Bible endorsed by Donald Trump. Yeah. So, yeah. That's how you know it's good. All right. We'll get into it. Like Mark's, uh, before we continue, I want to let you know uh, of a couple of quick things. First of all, if you want to see me do stand up live in person, go to TreyCrowder.com and check out my upcoming dates. Next up is Vancouver and Seattle. I'm coming for you, Canada. I'll see you there. I certainly hope so. Also on TreyCrowder.com, you can find a link to me and Corey's book around here and over yonder, a comedic travel log. It's a fun time. If you get the audio book, we read it dumbly and it's fun. Lastly, if you like this program and would like to show your support, you can do so by signing up on Patreon. You can go to weeklyskews.com slash more, or you can just go to Patreon and look up my name. Either way works. $5 a month gets you access to full-length bonus episodes like the one Mark just mentioned where we went into the whole TikTok deba debacle in Congress. This week, we're doing a skew and a where we answer burning questions from you, the skewers. So a lot of fun stuff over there. You get some more skews in your life and support the show in the process. Now, as for tonight's episode, Mark set it up top. Very excited to welcome a uh, pre-recorded segment with co uh, Congressman Eric Swalwell of California talking about all the recent chaos in Congress. It was a fun time. We know you guys are going to enjoy it. But before we get to all that, we must begin, of course, with the Daily Dumbass. Matt, graphic, please. <laughs> Tonight's dumbass, drivers who think they won't die on these damn woke millennial bridges. That's right, hit the video, Matt. There, but what kind of questions do you want to see answered, Matt? Well, you know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. And you can look at whether you look at our air traffic controllers, where we have critical mission problems with filling slots mm -hmm. um you know i'm no expert on what's going on on the seas but all i would say is is that uh, if you talk to employers in america they'll tell you that uh filling slots with employees who aren't drug adled is a very huge problem so i'm making all right notes you can cut it back so the crew is singaporean right if that matters at all to this, but that's not even like they, they, there's so much bullshit going on with this, but that's Matt Schlapp, who's the head of CPAC, who I saw in a paid ad on Twitter earlier, X or whatever you want to call it. There was CPAC had paid for that just said uh, sex abuse lawsuit against Matt Schlapp dropped exclamation point. So there he's feeling himself today. He, he they bought an ad to announce that he, he beat a sex abuse lawsuit. So uh, what happened about one thirty this morning, um, a ship that's like three times the size of the Titanic and the size of like a, a, a Nimitz class battleship uh, lost control of its, uh, he lost power control of its uh, navigation and crashed into a bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, um, collapsing a chunk of the 1.6 mile long bridge. It crosses the Patapsco River. It's, uh, it's the way you get across the river on I-695. Um, it shut down the port of Baltimore, which is one of the country's busiest, uh, country's busiest ports. It's not immediately clear how many cars fell into the water. Um, the, the crew was able to radio in like a May Day that they had lost control and uh, some cops were able to close the bridge off. So hopefully there weren't many cars crossing it. But last I saw six people dead or bridge workers who were stuck in the middle of the bridge. They couldn't be saved. And uh, uh, some other people were hurt and rescued. Um, uh even if no one died here, the economic impacts of this are going to be extremely dire. And if you anybody's watched The Wire, that bridge feature was featured a bunch in season two. Um, there's actually a scene <laughs> where Frank Sabatka calls his nephew Nicky to yell at him for doing scumbug, scumbag crime shit. And talks about, he points to the bridge and say, that it, we're like that bridge. I'm paraphrasing. Like that bridge, Nicky, it's like a metaphor. We'll always be here. Our family, the unions, the working class, mm -hmm. never like we're in the fucking yeah. So that part, just like uh, you know, full, as far as metaphors go. Uh, <laughs> so we're talking about like what this port goes down, Domino Sugar, like a bunch of industries are going to be like absolutely uh, uh, fucked by this. The city of Baltimore, whole families are going to have to leave or find new lines of work. Yada yada yada. This is going to be nice to have a government that operates in the real world. And um, this isn't a criticism of Biden administration, but we need like, you know, you need FEMA, you need the Army Corps of Engineers working 24-7 to get some get some sort of fix done quickly, as quickly as possible, even though it'll probably take a year or two at least. Um, the You need like 
we need like fast legislation to provide something like, I don't know, tremendous unemployment benefits for the city of Baltimore, people dealing with this disaster, yada, yada, yada. And I don't know if we're going to get any of that. <laughs> right. No, uh, because I mean, because I, so a, a massive cargo ship uh, operated by a Singaporean crew, right, suffered a catastrophic mechanical or technological failure, which led to them colliding with one of the supporting pillars of this bridge, which led to the whole bridge collapsing. And that is obviously Joe Biden's fault, right? Because of infrastructure reasons or immigration yeah. reasons or diversity reasons or all of the above. They're, 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 they're grasping for every straw available to right. blame this on Joe Biden from every angle you can imagine, despite it just being like, you know, a horrific once in a lifetime uh, industrial accident. Right. I do want to be clear. The videos make it look like the whole bridge collapsed, but it's really just two sections. So okay. I think pretty much the whole section you see on video collapse, but if you widen out, you'd see a bunch of the bridge still standing. Which Okay. I, dude, I was talking to Drew about this earlier before we recorded the mm -hmm. Well Red podcast. I was telling him because I, I just saw the video and I was like, dude, I fucking, what fucked me up about it was the fact that the I get that that's a horrific thing to happen, you know, but the fact that the whole bridge collapsed is like, I didn't know it was like that. I was like, I've seen documentaries of gigantic radioactive lizards taking out a uh, section of a bridge and the other sections mm -hmm. were fine, but yet the whole bridge, I didn't know they worked like that. So I'm glad you told me that that does make me feel a little bit better because having a brand new uh, existential fear at this age was, was, was upsetting me. <laughs> Not yeah. knowing that that yeah. can happen, but anyway. Yeah, it, it, the bridges like that are constructed to not have the whole thing collapse if one chunk does, and it, that part worked. So hooray okay. for America! Well, uh, that's good. That's and ingenuity. Um, so talking about how like trying to blame this on uh, on government policy or whatever, like I would like this for this to be a debate about policy, and we'll get to the ways that it's not in a second. But I want to say something nice about uh, Nancy Mace after you watch this video because she went on Newsmax and tried to talk about policy. If she was going to. She was dishonest about it. We don't even need to hear her section. I'll sum it up for you because it's long and boring. But I want to play this guy talking to her first because he's fucking hilarious. Been here. Yeah, you'll hear that. I'm sure you'll hear the Democrats have a press release and conference somewhere today or tomorrow about it. the need for a trillion dollar infrastructure program. Uh, after all the other ones, and that's my question to you. It seems like we we do have these infrastructure bills, lots of money in it. I mean. I've been under bridges. They're horrible to look at. <laughs> Sorry, you cut it back. If you drive over bridges, I've so spent all kinds of time under like bridges. A, you can understand yeah. why you know a, a well-read, well-kept man like me would spend a lot of my uh, time underneath bridges. You know what goes on under bridges? Policy debates and things of that yeah. nature. <laughs> two, ki two kinds of beings uh, spend a lot of time under bridges, and that's uh, you know uh, trolls and guys getting thirty dollars blowjobs. All right, so <laughs> I, uh, I, I the, anyway, what pleasant what Mace is about to say is the point she's about to argue is that like we had a you know a huge infrastructure bill uh, that, that passed under Biden and. Uh, a bunch of it went to green en green energy, and she's going to say that it uh, it should have been spent mo most of it should have been spent on roads and bridges, and that's a fair argument to have. And I'm like, I wish politics was about shit like that. It's just right. not. Now, obviously, right. like we should be spending on both green energy and infrastructure. And a little bit where you're talking about like the, the government funding bill, there's 1.2 trillion dollars, and 70 percent of it went to the military. And like we can do we can do both bridges and wind farms. Yep, that's a false choice. But anyway. At least she was trying to have something approach your real world talk, but she got derailed by talking about bridges. But it, like, so she's like full of shit. At least she's not talking about aliens and wokeness and DEI shit. Yeah. But a lot of people fucking were, and there was actually an ancient aliens guy. <laughs> this thing we're about to talk right. about. So, yeah, go ahead. Before you even get to that, though, I feel like I don't think it's unfair of me to say that, like, even like. Even if the infrastructure bill was nothing but roads and bridges, if it was put forth by the Biden administration, I still think Nancy Mace and her her ilk would have still voted against it largely. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they don't like they don't want to. That's still government. She in that clip, she talks all this about how like oh, our our infrastructure is falling apart. This is what government's supposed to be for, and it's like y'all don't think government's supposed to be for anything. You don't think it's even supposed to exist. Like, I still don't right. want to hear this argument coming from y'all y'all don't want to spend taxpayer dollars on this stuff it also doesn't stop a bridge from falling down when a boat hits it right billion ton boat drives yes, into it of course <laughs> that's the that's the main uh, point like yes, yeah, yeah exactly the reason you need infrastructure spending is to be able to quickly rebuild stuff just stuff to go uh, like that happens so um here's a list of other things that happened today after this uh an interview with uh senator rick scott uh from florida uh, maria bartiromo on fox news 
suggested this is because of Biden's wide open immigration policy at the border. <laughs> because yeah. the cargo ship was flying under a Singaporean flag. Right. Because um, all those Singaporeans rushing over the southern border, you know, the Singaporeans coming over on uh, rafts from Southeast Asia, landing here at the port of Los Angeles and stuff that we're all aware of. And immediately getting jobs on boats to go back to Singapore. Uh, Alex Jones uh, reposted a, something from Andrew Tate, known sex tra another sex trafficker. Uh, looks deliberate to me. Let me do my Alex Jones impression. Looks de deliberate to me. A cyber attack is probable. World War Three has already started. That's pretty now, good. Yeah, thank you for working on it. Um, so, <laughs> in case you're wondering, like, the whole thing is they lost control of the boat. A hacker would have taken control of the boat. Mm -hmm. Like, there was no power. And the government's already said there's no reason to believe there was any sort of, like, uh, 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 you know, hack or anything like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and also, if you're going to do that, you would also disable their communications. They couldn't warn the authorities that the boat was going to crash into the bridge and save a lot of lives, right? Right, yeah. Um, Anthony Sabatini, a Republican who ran for Congress in Florida, just said DEI did this. Diversity, equity, inclusion. What qualifies as a diversity hire on a Singaporean in boat? Singapore, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's like, I think Singapore is like uh, three quarters ethnically Chinese. So I guess they had to like, I don't know, fly somebody in from uh, right. Myanmar. No, it's like, this know. guy's like, it's like, no, Singapore should be hiring more white engineers for their boats. You know, that's mm. what, <laughs> like, if white people were on all these boats, none of this ever would have happened. That's what I hear whenever they, uh, you know, denigrate the idea of DEI. But yeah. Yeah. Some jack off huge influencer called Baltimore's mayor a DEI mayor because he happens to be black and like Baltimore. The guy won with seventy percent of the vote. He wasn't. You don't diversity hire a mayor. He fucking runs and he gets elected. Bro, uh, yeah, they aren't the. I would have. I would assume the mayor of Baltimore is almost always black. I would think because Baltimore's a very a, black city, isn't it? Going back to the wire, it's a whole thing. When Carcetti's right. running for mayor, he still says, like, no matter how well I do, I'll still wake up white tomorrow in a city that isn't. Now, he ends right. up winning because he just splits the vote. We're talking about the wire too much. But so <laughs> this guy named Jimmy Corsetti, who's like sort of like, uh, he makes like ancient aliens conspiracy theory videos, but he's also a huge conservative uh, influencer. He, he found some photos from a movie that Barack Obama produced last year called uh, Leave the World Behind, starred uh, 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 Juliet... Uh, what? I can't think of it. Fame, pretty woman. I didn't Julia, know. Uh, Julia Roberts. Julia, Julia Roberts? Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the f opening scene of that movie is a boat getting cyber attacked and crashing into something like, like a beach or something. And so he says, why on earth did Barack Obama produce a Netflix film about a catastrophic cyber attack? And here's the opening scene and screen grabbed it. So we've graduated from to the Obamas knew about the Baltimore Bridge accident and put it in the movie six months earlier because why? The, the book came out. The book is based on coming out in 2020 for whatever that's fucking worth. But this guy says this can't be a coincidence. The ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore was headed to Sri Lanka. The flag of Sri Lanka is a lion. The ship in the opening scene of Obama's Leave the World Behind is named White Lion. Fucking we cracked it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was a. I could have some of this wrong, but there was an X Files spinoff called The Lone Gunman about their like guys that had and and, and it only ran for a few episodes. But I believe one of the first episodes of The Lone Gunman had an attack, and this is in like '99, basically had 9 11 in it, like two years before 9 mm. 11 happened, right? And Vince Gilligan was a writer on that show. And, you know, fortunately for Vince Gilligan, no one's put it together yet that he's like a <laughs> covert conspiracy jihadist operative or whatever, because that <laughs> happened at that time. You know, I mean, it, I, the fact that Obama's name is on that is obviously why any of that's happening. But that's just so ridiculous. Mm. But all right. I guess let's uh, let's talk about Congress a little bit, Mark. What do you say? All right, we're running a few minutes behind, so I'm gonna speed speed through a few news updates. Uh, so Congress nearly avoided a government shutdown. Uh, they yeah passed a bill; more than seventy percent of it went to defense, which, which usually buy off a lot of Republican votes. But no, uh, the, the more, passed more Democratic votes for Republicans, and it made everybody mad to the point where uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, introduced a motion to remove Mike Johnson as Speaker because the bill moved too fast for her to sabotage it. Uh, she said she did. There's no movement on that. They come back in two weeks, so maybe she'll calm down. They'll talk her out of it. Um, but like Representative Kay Granger, who's been a longtime Republican congressman, she was my old congressman when I lived in Fort Worth, 
uh, Congresswoman, sorry. Uh, she uh, was a chair of the House Appropriations Committee. And after this, after passing this bill, she just like quit <laughs> being a bur- She didn't quit Congress, but she tr- quit the committee because she's just so fucking fed up with these psychos. And like, there's so so much of this bullshit. That, like, I'm I just out here wondering if Marjorie Taylor Greene is the best campaigner for co- for Democrats that there is. I mean, that's um, kind of that's like part of the the DNC's like overall strategy, sort of right, is like mm-hmm. elevating these lunatics like her because it helps them in the long run. I was about to say you're just talking about Kay Granger and all these other people that are stepping down and leaving. It's like anyone, you know, it started with. Well, I'm not saying it started with, but like with Cheney and Kinsinger and them, it's like anyone has any semblance of sanity or whatever gets forced out. And all that's mm-hmm. left is the lunatics, which is frightening. But the hope is right. That that makes them less and less electable at, you know, overall, right. If they, if they ultimately submit to this maniacal monster, that's like this cancer they have inside their own party. If it wins mm-hmm. out, ostensibly that will lead to the death of the party overall, or at least some kind of well, massive, you know, paradigm shift over there. Like that's what we're hoping for. Right. Cause if they keep power, but continue to get crazier, Holy shit. When you're talking about like Democrats elevating, you're talking about the campaign rat fuckery stuff, but yes, we Democrats did not make Marjorie Taylor Greene a leader. They, they did not make her speaker pro tem pretty often in the house. That was Kevin right. McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep, yep. So uh, she's like, so a couple of pe- other people have quit high profile positions lately. Uh, Mike Gallagher, who's a congressman, we don't have to play this video, Matt, uh, which is running behind. Uh, she, she went on TV and complained about how Mike Gallagher quit because he left to go work for Palantir, which is, owned, which is like a psychotic defense contractor owned by Peter Thiel. We need to get into it. He's not exactly, he's not a hero, but he did quit in a way that fucked the Republicans because he, 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 he uh, set it up so his resignation is effective April 19th. It makes it like a couple days too late for there to be a special election. So his seat's going to be empty until November. And he seemed to have done this on purpose to make it more likely for the Republicans to lose the majority between now and November because they don't have a very large majority. Two guys die and we have Speaker Hakeem Jeffries. Right? Um, so, uh, so the Republican majority, like I said, is down effectively to two votes. Um, it, if, if Dems do get the majority, by the way, they should absolutely hurry and try to codify Roe and to uh, remo- uh, uh, you know, overturn the Comstock Act because there's a Supreme Court case today that could take away uh, p- uh, you know, pill abortions nationwide uh they don't appear to have enough votes for it but people somebody needs to do something to stop this shit from potentially even possible being possible um there another guy we talked about how ken buck retired he fucked republicans the opposite way he he made he scheduled his resignation just early enough to force a special election which is hilarious because Lauren Boebert moved districts to run in his because hers is a toss up and his is safely conservative right to, to run in the special election she had to resign from congress in order right. to run for that seat. Right. But so she either has to do that or right. run against an incumbent in the fall. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Her rocking out. Yeah. Cause she's a, if she goes for that seat, she has to abandon her current seat, right. In a like hotly contested district. Correct. Mm-hmm. To attempt to go for this other one. But if she doesn't, then she'll have an incumbent in front of her, which would kind of fuck her. Uh, you yeah. know, hypothetically in that way. So yeah, she's uh. So Ken Buck fucking Lauren Boebert the way out. Like, if you, if you want to tell you what these people like to work with, the people in their own party are openly trying to tell you they're imp- they're impossible to work with and can't. Bro, work. I, I mean, right. I've said like I've said before, like I'm one thing I'm. I mean, I'm existentially terrified at most waking moments of the day. But one thing I have been enjoying is this how much they are kind of cannibalizing themselves and all the infighting that's going on on their side. Cause I still maintain, I'm not saying it never happened, but it wasn't, they did not have this type of, uh, you know, internal turmoil going on for a long time and watching it happen and watching them, uh, you know, rat fuck each other, as you put it is. Yeah. For, nice. for part, congressional parties, this divide, I mean, you'd probably have to go, Congress was probably more dysfunctional in the late 1850s, I would imagine. It was probably, uh, there's party, pro- probably internal party strife. I mean, both parties during the civil rights movement, the McCarthy era, did not, the McCarthy era in the 50s, not Kevin McCarthy area, although they both suck. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. But so before we, before we get to the interview, I want to set the table for impeachment because uh, it kind of fell apart last week. And but so I want to tell you guys what we're going to be talking to uh, um, uh, Eric Swalwell about. So, Lev Parnas, who was a Giuliani associate, uh, testified in front of Congress last week and basically told them that he had worked on all this Ukraine stuff with Giuliani for Trump. And it was all based on lies and it was all bullshit. All mm-hmm. right. Uh, 
Hey, so the, the cool here, the American people have been lied to by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and various cohorts of individuals in government and media positions. This is what Lev Parnas said. They created falsehoods to serve their own interests, knowing it will be undermined the strength of our nation. And that led to this moment from uh, the congressman we're about to talk to that went a little viral, and we'll unpack a little bit about it because a couple things happened here. I dare you to impeach, but you won't because you don't have the evidence. And because you don't have the evidence, you don't have the votes. Guys, it's dead. And so I'm here to pronounce the time of death. Five sixteen. Say it in Chinese. Impeachment is dead. Five sixteen. <laughs> All right. Five so that's in Chinese. That's Anna Paulina Luna saying say it in Chinese and talked about how like how with bad faith operators this is. So there was a well known incident you guys are probably aware of a few years ago where a woman named Christine Fang or Fang Fang, who uh, turned out to be working for the Chinese government, she had hosted a couple of fundraisers for, for Congressman Swalwell. And he apparently was informed to cooperate with investigators and cut off all contact with this woman. All these people have foreign nationals who work for foreign governments trying to get information and favors from them all the time. The best you can hope for is to have them come clean and be honest about it. Mm -hmm. And I, in good faith, in, co in cooperate with investigators and the FBI and shit, who could say, yep, nothing, nothing bad seems to happen here. Anyway, but they don't care about the, the truth, or protecting American interests. They just care about yelling, say it in Chinese, in favor of a bullshit impeachment that is meant to divide the country. And Trey, you can introduce uh, the congressman and play the interview now. Yes. Like. So, all right. Just so y'all know, you know, obviously we do this here program live. You're trying to coordinate schedules with an active U.S. congressman. Sometimes you got to make concessions like pre-recording it, which is what we did here. Like Mark said, we recorded this last Thursday at around, uh, it was 11 a.m. Pacific time, just so y'all know. But we're thrilled that Eric Swalwell agreed to join this humble program and we hope you guys enjoy this uh this interview with him also me and mark will be back at the end of this just so you know so we'll see y'all in about 20 minutes enjoy this interview with california congressman eric swalwell matt hit it Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. It means a lot to us. We really appreciate it. I wanted to start with a general welfare question. How are you holding up having to deal with these lunatics day in and day out? Having to spar well, you, with the Republicans, you know. Okay, you're not talking about my six-year-old, my five-year-old, two-year-old. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd certainly relate to that, too. Though, okay, because yes. they I've kick my ass every day. And, and getting that. them up, fed, dressed, and off to school, uh, that's the yeah. hardest thing I deal with. So it, it's just, uh, you know, the house is money once I, once I get uh, to the Capitol. I guess that does make sense. I've got I've got two boys. Mine mine are tweens though. They're eleven and twelve. So oh, wow. I, I like I've been nostalgic for the days that you're in right now. You know what I mean? I'm like yep. bittersweet. Like oh, my, mine are about to start hating me. Puberty's around the corner. I'm terrified. I miss the hell raising you know toddler days. Oh but yeah, anyway. I'm in the thick. That's where I'm yeah. at right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. So. We we devoted some time on this show already uh, in previous episodes talking about the TikTok bill, and we came down pretty firmly against it. I did one of my silly little rants on the subject as well. You are one of the relatively few Congress people who, who voted against the TikTok bill. Uh, can you tell us why you felt well, that way? We don't ban shit. Right. And I, and that's <laughs> there just you go. how I see it. And, and I, I don't like bans on bodies. I don't like bans uh, on books. I don't like, you know, bans on voting. And, and I don't like a ban on how uh, people communicate. And, and if there are data issues and privacy issues and algorithm issues, you know, we should take those on, but we should take those on for every social media uh, company. And, and when I look at like, you know, the, the intelligence threat, well, the last time a foreign government attacked America, uh, you know, through our elections, they used Facebook and Instagram right. Right. and YouTube and Twitter. And, and, and so, it just seems to me um, there's a better way to do this than to poke, you know, 100 million young people uh, in the eye as far as where they receive their news and small businesses that use uh, TikTok. And the president, by the way, he went on TikTok about two months ago, just just signed up. And his State of the Union had uh, about 200 million uh, different views. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I just don't like it. Don't like it. Right. There was a talking about uh, taking on data and algorithms and AI stuff as a whole. Like there's a bill that passed yesterday, right? Uh, unanimously, um, the Protecting Americans Data from Foreign Adversaries Act. 
Uh, tell, can you tell us this? They passed unanimously. I'm assuming you voted for it, or I did. Yeah, or, and, and yeah. this this you know limits uh, you know foreign government ability to purchase you know U.S. person uh, data uh, mm. essentially, and, and so that's that's why I thought you know with with TikTok, like sure, let's put more transparency in place, let's put more controls in place, um, let's understand you know the algorithm and, and have you know restrictions there if we feel like. Um, you know, there's a, a harm that's greater than, uh, you know, a, a infringing on free speech. But to just say, uh, sell it to an American company uh, or we're going to ban it. It's like, OK, so sell it to an American company that also has practices that I don't necessarily agree with um, when it comes to social media. Right. It's not as if, you know, some of these other companies uh, are, are doing great things when it comes to data, privacy and, and algorithms. Right. That was that was we pointed out. We, we talked about that, like the, like if the problem is the Chinese government having our data, they can still buy it on the open market. What's the difference between getting it straight from TikTok? Like, so it's, it's, it's an insane loophole there, but like, so one of the things it does, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'll just read through the text of the bill. It prevents foreign adversaries, and the adversaries in this context is specifically China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea, right? If I remember it. That's right, um, it, it, those four countries, yeah. Uh, it keeps them from buying geolocation and health data, voicemails, you know, texts, and stuff like that. But uh, this part jumped out at me just as, because it's funny, it's like it prevents foreign governments from uh, buying a photograph, film, video recording, or other similar medium that shows the naked or undergarment clad private area of an individual. So, like, uh, is there like a reason that President Xi can't have my nudes, but Elon can? <laughs> oh man, um, that that I'm gonna get back to you on that one. That, <laughs> if, you, if you want him to have your nudes, I, I we, yeah. yeah. We, I just really want President Xi to have my nudes, man. All, all the sex tapes you're making over here. Um, I, in general, approaching this stuff, like there was a quote in the piece I read from Maxwell Frost, who's the first gen, you know, first Zoomer member of yeah. Congress, yeah. who was in favor of this bill, didn't like the other one. It's like at the point you said, let's take on data as a whole instead of just attacking one bill. But like, my question is, like, does Congress have like a generation gap with these issues? Like, does it make it difficult to regulate tech? I mean, I know your, your district's near Silicon Valley, right? So I'm sure you're well versed in these issues. Yeah. So the answer is yes. You know, I was elected in, in 2012. I was 31. And for many years, and, and we didn't have that many people in their 40s and under at that time. We have a lot more now, uh, almost four or five times more now. Uh, but in my first couple of years, I was approached by my more senior colleagues, more so to kind of be like the IT help desk. And it was like, uh, hey, my phone's ringing in this hearing. Can you like turn it off? <laughs> or, hey, can you get me on Snapgram? Right. Mm -hmm. You're on Snapgram. I'd love, you know, if you could get me on there. And, and so I actually, because of this, saw an opportunity um, to uh, create uh, an organization called Future Forum. Uh, and I, I took our youngest uh, Democrats in the House. And we went out across the country to listen to and learn from uh, young Americans and then come back to Congress and, and educate our colleagues and, and try and legislate, uh, and particularly on issues like student loan debt, uh, obviously tech, uh, AI, uh, et cetera. But my advice to any of my colleagues is, you know, to really get behind the wheel uh, with, and, and take these technologies out uh, for a test drive. So, you know, early on with AI, you know, my, my good, well-intentioned staff were trying to put in front of me, you know, AI experts or, you know, professors or ivory tower crowd folks. And, and I, I said, no, I said, I, I need to know how it works. Like, I want to share a screen, you know, with a, a developer and I want to see like how it works and what I can do with it. And, and that's the only way I can understand how to legislate on it. And, and I think right. you have to be a little bit vulnerable and reveal that you don't know something to, to truly uh, understand what it does, which is why uh, last year we, uh, for the campaign side, uh, signed up for TikTok. And, and, and I have a TikTok phone that's separate from uh, my personal phone. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't want to like talk about something that I had never used. Right. You, I mean, you have a reputation kind of for being one of the more tech savvy members of Congress. You know, I think at one point you were dubbed the uh, Snapchat King of Congress, which is a, <laughs> that's a lofty title. Uh, I'm cool. sure you did. You How much did you hate that, by the way? Uh, yeah, I, I hate it. It. Yeah. Um, and I also I, I had used. Do you guys remember Vine? Oh, of course. I yeah. had find a vote. Um, and then, you know, Vine uh, was not around much longer. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'd record. You're not allowed to record a vote. And it was a, a an abortion ban. Uh, bill and so i vined like me pushing the button no yeah. 
uh, and uh, but yeah, I, I try. I think you really have you have to though. Like you have to stay current, or you just risk um, you know losing the muscle memory. You know to understand yeah. this stuff and, and legislate this stuff. Well, kind of on that note, since you are you know uh, you do keep up on, on that front with the tech front and everything. With all this talk recently about AI and everything, I can tell you, you know as a comedian and writers like we are, we've got our own concerns about it, uh, but. I mean, how are you feeling about that? And how big of a, how worried are you? How big of a dilemma do you think it is that technology is advancing just so much faster than like our government can possibly move to regulate or keep up with it? Like, how worried are you about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm very worried. And, and again, I, I think, you know, part of the risk is that, you know, policymakers, if they don't understand something, you know, the tendency is to just kind of be a part of the nodding class. So someone's yeah. talking to you about it, and you're just like, yeah, 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 I, I, I know what you're talking about. But if, you, if you're if you not using it and you don't see the benefits and understand the risk and think about like the guardrails, um, you know, to mitigate the risk, then as I said, then industry is going to want to go at one speed and, and then, you know, other organizations may want to go you know, in another direction. And if you're not using it, I, I just think you're, you're in the blind. And so that's why I really encourage people to use it. But what I'm doing practically, um, we are the first campaign uh, that is using a uh, technology. Uh, every time I post something on social media, on the campaign side, uh, it, it goes through an AI uh, filter that prevents the image or the video from being manipulated. So if you would essentially, if you try and manipulate anything that we post, uh, it will be the file will be corrupted. Uh, and, and so that is, you know, a protection and we're, we're kind of in a pilot phase of doing that right now. But my hope is that we see the successes and kind of can tell others, you know, why they should be doing this too, whether it's, you know, other campaigns or news organizations, you can't go back in time and, and, you know, you know, take off the internet what's already been uploaded, but everything going forward, especially in this consequential presidential election that's ahead, uh, you can do that. And then Trey, I don't, I don't know if you think about this with, with your kids. With AI, I also think a lot about, um, are we gonna have you know, a, a two class system of education where you have school districts that have qualified teachers and uh, you know, software capabilities and device capabilities for kids to learn AI at the earliest of ages, uh, so they can be in the AI economy, and then a class of kids who didn't learn it because they didn't have the resources, and then like, what the hell do they do? Uh, is this job market, uh, you know, drastically changes uh, because of you know needing people who know how to use AI? I, I worry about that, uh, you know, almost more than anything when it comes to AI. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm also kind of a Luddite. Like, if I was in charge, I'd just take AI out back with a gun and shoot it. But I get why you can't. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I, just, the, the, I was thinking about the agenda, like the, the generation gap divide, like the TikTok vote. Like, how many contentious issues are you and AOC on the same side of Matt, as Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't know if, if Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and Matt Gates were on that side. Before I think, uh, Donald uh, Trump, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. right. I mean, oh, yeah. Trump saw this. I mean, clearly, he met with like one of the biggest investors, and right. that that is well known, and, and yes. everyone knows what that conversation was like. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, can, like, can you help me with my bond? Cool. Let me let me talk to you uh, mm -hmm. about how I support TikTok now. Um, but Trump is also, you know, he's he is brilliant at finding the wedge issue, and that's what also makes me nervous about us being seen as a party that you know, would be banning, you know, this platform with someone as dangerous as Donald Trump. Um, because at the end of the day, like we, we, we lose to Donald Trump, like this guy is bringing a demo crew to our freedoms. Like he, he's, he's not a, the freedom candidate. This is a wedge issue because he cares about himself. Winning means he escapes his own criminal uh, culpability. And so if, if that means saying for a couple months that, you know, he supports TikTok and that gets him a few more votes or keep Biden, keeps Biden voters home, of course, that's what he's going to do. He, he's not operating from a core set of principles at all. Yeah, yeah it does seem like people are are blaming the Democrats more for the TikTok thing. And I don't know if it's because they expect that sort of thing from the Republicans or what. They're like, no, the Democrats are the ones who are supposed to stop yeah. this, stop things right. we don't like. And they're not doing it. So now I'm mad at them for this. But it does seem, you know, 
a little unfair to me, uh, but I guess you guys are probably used to that, right? <laughs> yeah, and look, it's, it's going to come down to what the president does, right? So right. I imagine the president is not going to want to move as quickly as the House moved on this. Again, it just kind of came out of nowhere. And that also, you know, the urgency of it uh, mm -hmm. gave me pause. That's what we could figure out. I was like, why, like, the bill was written and passed in four days or something, and nobody had yeah. ever heard of it before. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, the Senate side was reading this morning. They're going to write their own bill, and it's not yeah. clear whether, you know, they, have, they need 60 votes. So who knows what's going to happen right. with it. Um, uh, some other, I just want to, like, throw some out there. So I was reading about this case in Florida where a couple of teens, uh, boys aged 13 and 14, were accused of using an unnamed artificial intelligence, intelligence app, uh, application to generate explicit images of other, of other students from ages of 12 and 13 at their school. They got criminally charged for that. I Personally, I, I would rather the people that made the child poor generation machine be on the hook for it somehow mm -hmm. rather than the little kids. But, like, is the, the reason they're charged in Florida is there's no federal legislation towards it. Is there any, like... I know there's a couple of AI bills floating around out there, but there's any hope for any sort of progress on it, or is it just sort of like everything just sort of sitting in committees? No, you know, in credit to uh, actually one of the few bipartisan things we're doing, uh, Leader Jeffries, Hakeem Jeffries, and Speaker Johnson created an AI task force with equal amounts of Democrats and Republicans, and, and they're looking at issues uh, just, you know, just like this. And, and frankly, I, I remember when I was uh, a prosecutor prosecuting these horrific child pornography cases. You know, the law federally and in most states, you know, says that, you know, possessing like a digitally altered, you know, child porn pick exposes you to the same amount of criminal liability as if it was a real child. And the, and the reason is, is because the digitally all altered uh, pictures enable the culture of someone wanting to use a real child. And, and so that we recognize the harm, uh, you know, there. And so I, I do think with AI, we're going to have to take the same uh, approach that we're not going to, we're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt because it's digitally altered because it's still right. contributing to, you know, what would bring a harm uh, to a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mark, I want to make sure we get to the impeachment stuff. Cause we got like five yeah. minutes left. Can we talk about something you know? funny. I mean, Jesus I know, Christ. Uh, child <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming at it with like, <laughs> child porn pics and stuff. Yeah. It's a little brutal. So you did a, yeah. you, you had another great clippable moment yesterday as you want to do. You did it like a Dave Letterman style top 10 reasons why you guys are idiots in this impeachment inquiry. You uh, pronounced a time of death for the Biden impeachment inquiry and gave all the reasons why it should be over. Loved that. My question is like, do you actually think they're going to let it go? Do you believe this is the end of nonsensical theatrics from the Republicans in Congress, especially where the Biden family is concerned or, you know, where you at on all that? Yeah. It's, it's like that, uh, the new Taylor Swift song, you know, is it over now? Um, yeah. kind of like, are we, we're wondering, like you, you guys had someone testify from the fucking slammer by zoom, right? right. Yeah. Does that yeah. mean it's over? Fox news broke away from its coverage 10 minutes in. And they were like, uh, this seems like the same old hearing. I mean, does that mean it's over? I, I don't know. There, there was the uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Was the guy who testified from the slammer the same guy who had, the, had a photo of meeting with Mark Meadows while wearing a ski no, mask? Or is that, that was Bobolinsky. Oh. <laughs> Bobolinsky, who has a very criminal sounding name and, yeah. and and affect. So it's like they're all like bad '80s villains, you know, henchmen or something. <laughs> all their star yeah. witnesses. <laughs> They're in a cul-de-sac and you know, they made a lot of promises uh, without any evidence. And so the the Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene crowd, I mean, they they're expecting a vote on impeachment, but they, they can't have that vote because there will be an acquittal. And, and so I, I don't know what they're going to do. Um, but as I said, it, it's at the expense yeah, of what we need to do I, in a lot of other important areas. I, uh, sorry for just talking over you. I, I just I, went, there was, I, made, I, I saw a really funny moment. I'm not sure if it was yesterday or this morning where Moskowitz moved for impeachment and couldn't get a Republican Senate second. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we're almost like it's and it's like, why are we the ones daring you to do this? Like you're the one that wanted to do this. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and, they, and they know they know that they don't have the votes. And if they don't have the votes, that means it's an acquittal for Joe Biden. So, again, they're just kind of they're in this impeachment quicksand, but they're not they're not going to impeach them. They, they don't have the evidence. They don't have the votes. And so they're just stuck, which is kind of the theme of this MAGA Republican Congress. So what you're saying is they have to keep, they can't quit and they can't call a vote. So you have to just have to keep having these hearings all the way through the and election. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on that note, I wanted to, I, I wonder about this all the time because me and Mark are both from like the rural South. Yeah. And so like, I grew up with, I grew up with all these people that like, I know 
if you like quiz them on what their actual beliefs were, you'd be horrified by a lot of it. You know what I mean? But like <laughs> just dealing with them on a day to day basis or whatever, they seem fine. They seem nice and normal. You know what I mean? It's like I had great relationships with some of these people and they're full bore lunatics. So I wonder all the time when I think about yeah. you and your uh, colleagues on the in the yeah. Democrats in Congress having to deal with this current brand of, Rep of MAGA Republicans, like having to work with them daily. Like, I mean, what is that actually like? Like what kind of work environment is, is that? How is that for you? <laughs> yeah. So as I say, nice is never the problem, right? Right. You guys are all nice, but then they're like voting uh, to give your daughter a government mandated pregnancy or uh, preventing your uh, neighbor from getting the fertility treatment that she wants uh, and calling her a serial killer for wanting, you know, to not use all the embryos and have, you know, 10 kids. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, ni nice is never uh, the problem here, but, and I, I got to run and vote, uh, but yeah. I'll just say this, it, it's a pro wrestling culture. That's what's so yes. bad. These guys, like if they see me out at dinner or on a plane or even like, you know, in the restroom, they're like, Hey, Swalwell, bro, saw you on TV. You were <laughs> great. And you're like, what? Like, what? Right. Are you kidding me? And I just come to realize they just see themselves as like entertainers and like, it's okay to hit me over the head with a steel chair in the ring because that's what they think the fans want, who I call constituents. But when we're <laughs> off camera, we're cool because we we all get that it's just entertainment. And that, that is most frustrating. I respect Marjorie Taylor Greene a hell of a lot more than Ted Cruz because yeah. she believes her crazy. Okay. And Ted Cruz knows it's all bullshit and he just he sees himself, you know, yeah. as an entertainer. And then that's that's kind of the problem. That's Absolutely. how it's always seemed. So thank you for confirming it. And thank you so much for your time, Congressman. We'll let you go vote, Congressman Swalwell. We appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, you Congressman. Good work. Of course. Well, how about that, Mark? Two hillbilly giggle mongers talking to a U.S. congressman. That was fun, right? Yeah, I like the part where uh, he roasted us for not being funny. Yes, enough. I know. Maybe. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, <laughs> his staff apparently told him he was going on a comedy podcast. And he was expecting right. to do good. We're asking about AI child porn. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. but it's like it's the wild, it's the wild <laughs> west out here, man. It's like everybody's like, like, and we didn't get a chance to ask him about like. There's like a booming market for AI images of, of porn of celebrities that's being sold as still images on eBay, and like, there's no way to stop. I mean, like. I, I, my, the theory I was, the, the solution I was going to pitch him is have a law that's kind of like the selective service, except when you're 18, except in, when you sign, instead of signing up for the draft, everyone has just has to post all their nudes. So then we're all at least on equal footing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, so like an hour, we, we taped that about an hour later, I see a clip of him online at a hearing where um, Republicans are trying to insert some rider into a bill that would have mandated uh, bathroom usage to, uh, uh, it, it, the gender you were sent at birth for, I guess, school kids or something. And he just raised the point. It's like, how are you guys going to enforce this? Do you want, you really want cops inspecting genitals in the fucking bathroom? And then he got in a good dig at Jim, uh, Jim Jordan. Where he said, I guess at least I'm glad now you're talking to uh, care about what happens in locker rooms. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's what a weird place to fucking work, man. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lauren Russell Pink says, great interview. Thank you, Lauren. We'll try to have more for y'all in the future. Yeah, keep them coming, Matt. Eric J. Laufenberg says, I absolutely love when you have guests. Thank you for doing this. Yes, we are, just so y'all know, we're actively trying to do better uh, about that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, when you do it live, it's hard. That's why the pre, this pre-tape that, probably is probably right. That's around. That's the thing, and it seems like you guys are cool with it. Uh, but yeah, that's part of it is in order to continue doing it, a lot of them will probably have to be pre-taped because doing it live, we have a very strict time frame we can give people. And if that don't work out for their schedule, then we're just fucked unless we pre-tape them, which of course we can do. So I guess even that, that little, cool. little behind the scenes info, we had to, we had to yes. hurry and go 20 minutes early because the schedule changed. And so that's why Trey was doing the interview in the top. In, a, of the Peloton. in a Lululemon <laughs> shirt. I know I almost said that before it started. I was like, Trey, it's fine. No one will even care. Don't even bring it up. But yes, yeah. we, that we, right. He had to, because of vote stuff, we got a call. It's like, Hey, he needs to do it now. He needs to do it right now. And I was still wearing my, my, my Lulu, my Lululemon shirt from being on the Peloton and stuff. And I was like, okay, all right, fuck, let's do it. So 
That's why I look like that, Mark. Much more professional than me. Debbie Lynn Robinson says, hit that like button. Thank you, DLR. We appreciate it. Smash that like button. Subscribe, share, tell your friends, all that. Kimberly Jordan says, Swalwell was great. It is. You can tell just from, I think, just in the House of Representatives, there's so many of them. The ones you know, I feel like the ones on the right, you know, that means they're like profoundly crazy, but the ones on the left who you're aware of and see pop up repeatedly, that does mean they got something else going on. You know what I mean? They got a natural affinity for it. Like there's so many Congress people out there who you just like never hear of. And I just, they just ain't, you know, they just ain't got the, the, the riz as the kids put it or something. <laughs> There is. Amy Nagel yeah. says, great job on the interview, Trey and Mark. Could have listened to him for hours. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's something like, like it's it's kind of hard to even legislate anymore if you're not going to be telegenic and be able to talk to your constituents. You know, it's like right. the, the one of the things we do here is sort of unpack, like, like here's like a sound bite you heard. Here's 25 minutes of explanation about what's actually happening. Because it's, it's hard yeah. to like, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, being interested, who has time to figure out everything that's fucking going on, you know, like mm -hmm. trying to, that's, what's so weird about, um, like the, 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 we're talking about the Baltimore, the Baltimore bridge stuff. It's like trying to explain what's actually happening here. Who was on the boat, what the or sequence of events, the rescue operations, all that, that takes a lot of time saying it's because of COVID lockdowns it takes five seconds. It takes no right. research. It's lazy as fuck and it'll get a ton of views because you're a moron. So it's just like. Sweet. Yeah, Car Carta on YouTube says, I really prefer our representatives to be smart. Yes, those were the days, weren't they? I'm not saying they were always smart, but there definitely seems to be a higher percentage of yeah. not smart ones working out there now. The, the dilemma is you need 435 smart ones to pass quick, nimble legislation when like, uh, you know, when like AI is learning at a, a, a like a, a thousand X rate and it's destroying the Internet to the point degree it's unusable. Like if you... I don't know if you've seen Google, if you use the Google AI search, like it'll tell you things that are patently false. The algorithm tells the computer that that's what you want to hear. Right. right. It's like, yep. Great. Yeah. Alan Speed says, funny to see Mark with no hat though. Uh, but on the button down shirt for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> seven, yeah. Six months. Mark got gussied up everybody, but yeah, no, I'm what you were just saying without like, I've thought before about how like the nature of the internet, in its current iteration and maybe always, but with it's like ubiquitousness now, like you can find validation for almost anything that you want to believe. Do you know what I mean? Like immediately, uh -huh. like if you want to think something is true, you can find ostensible backup or evidence for that. And, uh, and you know, that's part of the danger of the, the timeline we live in command YouTube commando says pro Mark. Yeah. He's a real pro. I was that okay. I was like, I was like, he's just, I thought he was just the, I'm pro. Or Mark. maybe that's what he means. Maybe he's just yeah. pro Mark. Either way, he's pro Mark <laughs> and Mark's a pro. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a double well, layered thing. I don't know. The pro, the, all the people that are pro Mark, the list is pretty much just you. It doesn't even include me or my wife. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. They know. Wait, you wait till we do this uh, Q and a on the Patreon this week. I even put it in the prompt. I was like, give us all your questions for Mark and to a lesser extent me. They want to know what you want to think about it, buddy. I'm just like a, a novelty who's present. Lauren Russell Pank says, Mark looks sharp, though. Yeah, he did. I know he did. Thank you, Lauren. God damn it. I said I fucked up. All right. We're supposed to have another 20, 30 minutes. It's okay. Anyway, yes, he did. See, I interpret. I feel like Corey right now. I interpret a compliment mm -hmm. to you as an insult to me. And uh, acoustic... Acoustic Iris says we're all pro Mark here. See, I told you, Mark. I told you I, see, this is what they love this you. Is what, this is why I don't need therapy. I'm not gonna these like these are the by the way, these are just the comments Matt's picking, not the <laughs> yeah. 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 Speaking of which, Joey West says today is my birthday. Can I get a happy birthday from the guys? No, Just kidding. Happy birthday, Joy. Hope it's a hope it's happy a birthday, Joy. Mine's yeah. around the corner, in fact. So I don't know if I, I'm not up on astrology. I don't know if we're in Aries cutoff yet, but I'm an Aries. So if you're in Aries, that means nothing. But hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. Carla Barrick says, Who would you want to interview now if you could choose? I mean, there's plenty of people. AOC would be a great one, obviously. 50 Cent. You know, 50 <laughs> Cent. Get 50 on here. Yeah. Cat Williams, obviously. Oh, there's tons mm -hmm. of people we would love to. Love to get yeah. on the show. Well, let me ask you this though, Mark, like in sincerity, since that question got brought up, because I've wondered about it before and I think we're probably on the same page. 
where would you fall on having, uh, you know, opposition on here? People that we'd have to like go after if we could get them to agree to do it. Do you know what I mean? Right wing thought leaders or, or, or Congress people or whatever. Like where do you fall on the like platforming versus taking them to task? You know, would you even want to fuck with doing all that or no? To take someone to task, they have to be intellectually honest. Like, like we, we'll get on here. I'll tell you when I think maybe I'm full of shit on something, but they never right. will, right? Yeah. So, like, what, what do you, uh, uh, what do you, if I say, like, what do you say to a person who says this, and they pivot to being like, this is just what the woke would just, like, I don't, they, like, like they all, it's also plug and play right now. Like, like I, yeah. I don't even know how you'd even have a honest conversation with somebody. No, I, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at on it too. It feels like uh, it's not, not a great idea for that and a myriad of other reasons, but yeah. I think it'd be interesting to talk to someone who converted, like who yeah. used to be like a hateful person. Then like, like I think I've mentioned on the show, the guy who was the son of the guy who founded Stormfront, the Nazi neo-Nazi website, then went to college and tried to major in race science at new college to prove all the liberals wrong. Then ended up being like, Hey, wait a minute. Race science is yeah. wrong. I love, I'm a like, liberal now. Like some yeah. dude who devised some rocket or experiment or something to prove the earth was flat. And then, Prove to himself that it wasn't. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that'd be fun. interesting. It would, yeah, yeah. Right. I have well, no, no interest in like having somebody come on here and spew a bunch of talking points that are based on lies. And we try to unpack them, they just pivot to a new lie, which is what I yep. heard that. All right. Well, mm -hmm. we'll see what we we'll see what the future holds. Thank you all for watching. Like I said earlier, go to TreyCrowder.com, <laughs> see my tour dates. Come and see me live. It's a lot of fun, I promise you. And if you like this program, you can sign up on the Patreon, go to weeklyskews.com slash more, or go on Patreon and search for my name, five dollars a month. Get two boat. Two full-length bonus episodes per month where we get into all the other stuff that we can't make it to in the show. It's a lot of fun. But the main thing is you keep watching this here edition every Skews D, and we'll keep doing it. We'll see you all in seven days.